G'day guys, how's it going? All right, in this video, what we're doing, obviously by the title, is doing a review information. I've just bought this helmet. It's an RJ's Apex 2. I paid $116, that's Australian dollars. It's recommended $109 off the RJ's website. I got it locally here at um, Elliott Brothers, a local motorbike shop for 116 bucks. So we're gonna run through all the features, then we'll take it out on the road, see how it performs, noise-wise, buffeting, or bloody any of that kind of bullshit. All right, let's get into it. Rightio, so what is this helmet made out of? ABS polycarbonate plastics. Okay, so air vents, it's got one down here, simple push down, push up. You've got three air vents up there, this control there controls all three of these. So it's off, on, off. Um, and then at the back, you've got the exit uh, vent, so that gives you five of them. Rightio guys, so they mentioned this thing about five point multi ratcheting system didn't know what the hell <coughs> what the hell they were bloody on about but it's this visor so it's got this ratcheting thing so you go down one two three four and then five snaps that totally closed I'm not sure this visor I don't know it's I don't know it feels a bit cheap I mean there's nothing wrong with it it just and just that first initial Oh, that first initial bloody thing is a bit of a bugger, but it seems to seal pretty well. So that's the visor. You can get uh, replacement ones. I think I've got it listed here. Uh, replacement visor available in clear, light smoke, dark smoke, high def yellow, and iridium silver. And then they've got comma golden blue. So I don't know whether that's what the iridium is. Um, but I'll, 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 all I need is the clear. I'll wear sunglasses if I need bloody sh uh, shades. They say that the screen is anti um, anti scratch. As we all know, anti scratch doesn't mean that it won't scratch. It just will avoid being scratched. But if you knock it with something pretty hard, you're going to scratch the bloody thing. So now they bank. So obviously the um, liners inside, and we'll pull them out. They're removable, washable. There's a whole spiel here, it says, I don't even know how to pronounce it, Aegis, A-E-G-I-S. Revolutionary bonded antimicrobial technology provides protection against odor, staining and deterioration caused by bacteria, fungus and other micro microorganisms. So basically, if, if you've, back in the day, your helmets and they get all bloody cruddy and crap and they do, they start to bloody rip up and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I know with the newer stuff, they just work bloody great. And I think most helmets these days are gonna have that, um, whatever this bullshit bonded crap they talk about, um, they do. You, I've never had to bloody pull stuff out to wash them. They just, they stay really good. So let's get this off and have a look in here. Oh, by the way, that's Fred, the styrofoam head. Rightio, yeah, guys, so if you can see in there, so that's the innards of it now i actually should tell you that so this doesn't have an australian standards sticker on it there's not that's not a, i don't even believe that that is a standard sticker on the inside here i can get that in there if you can see that see that e9 so that's this helmet has been approved with european standards so E9 means European and 9 stands for Spain. So Spain was the country that approved this helmet for RJs. Um, and I, I was just checking my other ones. So my open face helmet, I'll just turn you around to some of the bloody helmets over there. So my that one there is Australian standards. This one over here is a Bell helmet, MX helmet. That's got Australian standard sticker on it. But the one over here is dot standard. Um, so they're all over the place. So I think 
Back in 2016, the whole in Australia, all the stand, we didn't recognise European standards. You had to have the Australian, so it's all all changed now. So obviously, we're going to start seeing a lot of our helmets that are coming in are going to have that European, and that's okay. When you first think, oh, Spain, what, what, are they, are they got good standards. Obviously, Australia has looked at all the standards for for the European and all of whatever, and they've gone, yep, that's fine, okay, not a problem. As long as they're doing it to those standards, we recognise those standards as being good standards and we'll allow them to be sold in here. So if you're worrying about, ooh, that should be fine. It will be fine. So let's pull out these liners. Let's see if I can get you down like that. So I think for the cheek, they're just two snap buttons, no, no, three actually. All right, there you are. So that's your cheek one out. Slide that out like that. And then I think we've got two snaps at the back. And then it's just Velcroed along, along the front where your brow sits. So that's the inner of that. So these can be chucked in the bloody washing machine and cleaned up if you need to do that. But geez, the way they the way these are now and whatever that bullshit they're talking about, um, they're pretty hard pressed to get you know to the stage where you need to wash them. But you've got that option. Nothing special in the helmet. There's no mips or anything like that. Yeah, you know, this this is a cheap helmet. So the other, the only other thing uh, feature of it is that it does have what they call a breath guard. I don't know how well that works. Um, and basically, that's just to help with the fogging of the um, of the visor. This actually sits quite close to my mouth. It doesn't touch it, but it is very close. See, I'm not normally used to running with a uh, full face helmet. Um, but I've had this on and it's, and it's, quite, it's quite comfortable. So we'll whack all this back in, chuck it on me head, and then we'll get bloody ready to um, head out on the road. Rightio guys, let's bloody whack this helmet on. I must say, now, oh, that's the only thing that annoys me at the moment is that, just that, this, just that initial open, it really feels very comfortable. It's very light. This is actually lighter by not much, I think 50, uh, 50 grams than my Bell um, MX Adventure, um, the Adventure helmet. I was quite surprised actually by that. So it feels very light on the head. It's very comfortable inside. Um, for me, Having this so close because my MX ones have a, a more of a peak out here, and of course I normally ride on the road with um, with that one there, the open face. There you go. So that's it. When this is closed, I really it's very loud. So I'm hoping that uh, when I'm out on the road, it's not loud. The wind rushing past. So that's that's. We'll find that out in a minute. All right, guys, so I, I don't think I can tell you anything more about this. Um, I think I've covered everything. Tomorrow, because it's night time at the moment, tomorrow we'll head out on the road and then see how it performs on the bike. Rightio, guys, so we are now out doing this bloody test. So I'm just going to go through these um, slow bloody streets. Obviously, this is the main road. Then I'm going to head out on the highway, do the whole sound uh, test. And the first thing I want to do, I don't know whether that vise is just a little bit, doesn't go right up. The first thing I notice is my glasses fog up. Not bad. But, uh, and I can also see just this rim here. It's not in my view, but I can see it. And something obviously being a bloke that bloody rides with an open face helmet and my MX or Adventure helmet plops right up out of the way. So just initially that's a kind of like, oh, what the hell is that?
Now what I'm doing now is looking at my peripheral, so from left to right, and I got heaps of peripheral. Don't have to move my head and I can see well and truly. I don't think you'd find a helmet that wouldn't have good peripherals in this day and age. So my glasses are now just starting to bloody fog up. Which is a pain. Don't get that with the open face. All the MX, because the chin, the chin part's a lot bloody uh, wider, or pokes out further. A lot more uh, ventilation, I suppose. There you go, you got a bit of bloody wood there. All right, let's put this visor down. So what do we got? One, two, Oh, so hang on, if I do one, yeah, okay, that's just bringing that line closer down. That one there I get a little bit of distortion right at the close bit, so that's kind of like, I don't know, unusable. That's okay, that's pretty good. So if you're fogging up, running it like that would be no worries at all. We've got still another one, so that's just a crack open. That works really well. Now, I was saying about this visor, you know, seeming a bit bloody cheap or whatever, but I tell you what, the clarity through it's really, really good. There's no distortion whatsoever, except for right at the, just at the bottom bit there. So then we'll just bloody, oh, hang on. Get up and out of the way. Now we'll pull this down, the last click. All right, hey, that's it. We are sealed in. I can instantly um, hear the difference, obviously. It's like I'm in a bloody fish tank. So the helmet is really, really comfortable. I've got to give it that. The lightweightness of it, brilliant. It doesn't feel like some heavy. Because my first off-road helmet, it was a heavy helmet. And you could feel the weight, especially, you know, after a couple of hours, and obviously doing off-road stuff, it was heavy. And as soon as I moved to the, um, the Bell MX-9 or whatever the what hell it was, Adventure Helmet, it was like, well actually, first I got the just the pure MX helmet, and I was like, oh my god, this is great. And this is what this feels like. Not much more comparable to my um, open face helmet. Now the open face helmet is I think just over 1200 or 1 1.2 kilograms. This is just over 1.5 kilograms. So there's not much in it. For me again, obviously I'm now totally covered in this. I'm like, there's nothing. With my MX helmet and the open face, you know, I've got wind coming in. Obviously the open face is straight on me. So from that point of view, that's pretty good. So what are we doing? Well, we're doing 90 k's in an 80 k zone, so that's not right. We've got to go back it down a bit. 100 k zone is not far up here. I can hear slight rattles. It's wind, it's wind just cracking off certain areas. I want to get myself right up. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's pretty bloody good, guys. Noise-wise. You know, I've got wind. I can hear it. All right, coming into the 100, we'll just bloody uh, get her up. crackling so I mean I'm not a connoisseur of helmets I haven't worn a lot of different helmets so for me comparing this to other helmets it's just not going to happen I'm not, basically not going to be any good to you So that's, that's telling me it's a noisy helmet. I think that's a noisy helmet. I 
but it's not overly noisy but in I think when people talk about whether it's a quiet helmet or a noisy helmet this would be a noisy helmet but I, I'd happily bloody uh, ride around all day in this noise it's actually quite nice I'm used to getting bloody cold on the face and but I also I prefer the openness and it's not because I get claustrophobic because I don't um, I feel more in tune with <coughs> the outside it's, it, this is a little bit like you know being in a car for me, that is for me, that's just my own personal thing and I know you can get down the whole rabbit hole of full face is more, um, you know, more protection than the bloody face, uh, open face, blah blah blah, not getting into that shit. So look, I suppose, I'm going to just keep going and um, I'll pull up at a, a roadhouse thing, and there's most probably another 10 k's down the road and I'll give you my thoughts. Right here guys, so we've just uh, pulled up to this roadhouse thing. Well, there you go guys. That's the bloody review. So, um, really comfortable helmet. I've got to say that it is a noisy helmet. Uh, the visor, I take back my things with the visor. I think that's fine. I think it, it's really clear everything. For a hundred, just over a hundred dollars, I mean, if that's all you got, get one of those helmet. It'll do the job. If you've got some more muddy money to spend, Look at getting a bloody dearer one. Obviously, well you should, maybe get a quieter helmet. Um, might have a few extra little bloody gizmos in it. I don't know. I think quietness, lightness, um, good clear vision. That's basically the three things that you need to be, uh, to be doing when getting a bloody helmet. So there you go guys, that is the RJ's Apex 2 full face helmet. Cool. Keep on riding, and if you ain't riding, keep on keeping on.